I think everybody can relate to that. One of the most important weapons in a country. You heard that? Education is one of our most important weapons in a country against poverty. Today you've heard a lot of things. And I think basic education, our education system has been highlighted. But I think we are all speaking about skill sets for the 21st century. And I think to myself, you must be joking. When 90% of the schools in our country do not have computers, people, do not have access to internet access, network. I mean, we, we, how or what are we thinking and what are we proposing? How do we build the skill sets of the 21st century when these are the kind of issues we're dealing with? How do you build companies when you don't actually have the skill sets? When I think, for example, of the manufacturing circle, you know, which is when I've been working with on ISFAP, they wanted to develop entrepreneurs. They set funding aside. They couldn't develop entrepreneurs. Why? Because they didn't have skills, tool and die makers. We speak about artisan training. They had to set up their own training programs to develop these specialist skills fourth industrial skills that we need. And when you try and make it bigger and get them twinned with TV colleges, nightmares. So what exactly do we speak about? And I think one can't speak about skills and education, they're synonymous. Our people cannot read and write. Basic skills, and it's been, it's been highlighted today. If I think about where we are and what we need to do, we really, as citizens, need to start having serious conversations. Nobody in this country is able to solve the problem alone. Ask me. Nobody. We have to form very, very strong public-private partnerships. Now, I'm going to remind all of you about a stat. If you look in 2007, because this is what we always speak about in the team, how many youngsters start grade one? And they're all so excited, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, you've seen the pictures. Go and have a look how many of them actually complete metric. 512,000. Get the picture? How many of them pass metric? And I don't even want to say pass. Because it was said here today, how on earth can you pass with the kind of pass percentages that we, that we put through? We are kidding ourselves, okay? And that must stop. Think about it. Think about what you tell a child. Oh, we're celebrating. You've seen on TV all these programs, basic education. Look, at, look what we've done in our provinces. Don't you agree with me that we are measuring the wrong thing? And we only need to realize today, <laughs> In business, it's the same thing. You only get what you measure. So if you measure those kind of passes, well, we all celebrate the wrong thing. We've become a country of mediocrity. We do not strive for excellence in everything that we do. We don't. From the top right down to the bottom, and we've become satisfied with it. Isn't it amazing? Sad, but extremely true. So when we look at it, there's 400,000 children lost. Now, we're only speaking about the 2007 ones that started the system. Lost. Lost. What happens to them? They form part of what everybody else is trying to solve. We need to solve basic education. That's what we've got to solve to, if we want to speak about it. Now, the other big thing, I don't know if any of you are aware of this, when you have to start speaking about some of the critical skills our country requires, you need a minimum of 60% to get in some of the university programs. Ask me. It's our business. Okay. 
at the universities are here. I'm glad to see Walter Sisulu is here. They know it's my sweet spot. But let me tell you, how many do you think of those children get above 60% in mathematics? Now, we're looking at African and colored children. Can I tell you? It's disgraceful. On those few children, you've got to do medical doctors, nurses, artisans, because I've got news for everybody. You need mathematics to become a good artisan. Charter accountants, actuaries. How on earth do we speak about skill sets of the 21st centuries when we don't get the basics right? We have got to deal with some of these issues, but nobody can do it alone. Partnerships become absolutely critical in what we want to do. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are aware this a skill set, I can't remember, I think since we slide it up, there's a skill set that requires the four C's, 21st century. Collaboration. Whew, South Africans are bad at that, eh? Self-interest. Please look at me, I'm so important, you know how good I am. But it's my project, I don't share. Collaboration, big problem in our country. Critical thinking. The way we currently teach, compartmentalized, I'm afraid, will not deliver the skill sets we require. And I'll take to you, I'll speak to you, I know Robert's going to murder me, but I want to take you through what we're doing in our profession to develop some of these skills. We've got creativity and communication. Communication, why can't our youngsters communicate properly? Half sentences they can't even spell. Mm -hmm. You've seen it. Now we complain when they work. They can't write a report. Hello? think about what is happening around us. So I was also asked to tell you, there's a lot of said about skills, but our biggest problem facing us is our schooling system. I was asked to speak to you about Tatuka. In our profession, we had huge issues. We were permanently criticized by government. You elitist. <laughs> elitist is one thing. You need to be elitist in terms of standards, people. I am begging you. The quality of our teacher education is poor. They have no standards. Every university does whatever they want. Why do you think the CA designation has stood the test of time? Let me think about it. We control the curriculum. We accredit universities. We accredit training offices. We work with the universities, public-private partnerships, in deciding how we work and how do we get our students to the level. Nothing just happens. Do we do that for the most important people in our country, our teachers? No. Are you aware that a maths teacher does not need to have a BSc degree, mathematics? <laughs> so, but it's true. That's the quality and that's the kind of youngsters we make available to our children, our children. It's scary, but it's true. Because we don't control, and I'm, I've ex and Cesare knows, I have extended as part of the MECT, and he works with the minister, they need to start determining curriculum. From early childhood development up to whatever, because the quality of our teachers and principals we need to fix. So when we started at Saika, I was given the wonderful opportunity to say, what are you going to do to transform our profession? to reflect the population's demographics. I got a big fright because I understand professional education and it took, us two, it took us two years to start understanding what we are going to do. And one of the critical things, we were not going to drop standards because is that not terrible for the people of our country to say, sorry, you can't get this, so what we'll do is we'll just do away with a couple of things. Not true. Our people are incredibly talented and gifted. And we need to say, how, what do we do? How do we help them to actually deal with this? Partner universities. We started to Tuka in 2002 at the University of Forte in the Eastern Cape. And we had a long-term strategy. What are we going to do in schools to help our youngsters? We haven't mentioned today career awareness because youngsters from rural areas have not a clue. Okay. Not a clue. They've heard of something, they think, oh, I must do that. No. Career awareness, working in the most rural areas, saying to them what you could do to become a CA. 
at the University of Forte, not an accredited university, you can't walk away. You capacity built. Who do we choose? We chose the University of Johannesburg, Professor Amanda Dempsey's here. She, they used to drive to Alice, let me tell you, on those early morning flights. We capacity built year by year by year. Education takes time. Proper education. Please, people, there's no magic wand. You build the youngsters. You build the lecturers. I stand in front of you today incredibly proud of where we are. And we'll show you the stats later of what we've achieved. So we started at 40 and we realized, but hang on, we need a bursary fund. Because then we didn't have free education, no 2350, it was 122,000 and nothing. And now the youngsters are saying, okay, you're telling us how to become a CEO, what do we do? So we had to set up a bursary fund. But it wasn't a normal bursary fund. We said to the universities, you can play in our pool. However, all our students will have accommodation, on-campus accommodation. Mm -hmm. You will provide life skills. You're not going to leave our youngsters to their own devices and say, OK, you funded, you fund. No. We're going to grow them. As you saw that flower, we're going to grow and nurture our young people into something special. And they will hold their own. And we sent them, and if they need psychosocial support, you will provide it. We're in this together. We are not going to be happy with 20% or less throughput pass percentages. We're going to hold all the universities fit to the fire. And we're going to hold our students fit to the fire because studying is a discipline. So if we're giving you everything, focus. And that's how we started the fund. Very little. We've learned a lot. Three universities initially joined us, UJ, WITS, UCT. Today, where are we? We have capacitated every historically black university in the country. We did not walk away from our universities in the rural areas. We will not do it as a profession. We want our children who become chartered accountants to have every opportunity that they possibly can and that the quality of the education is on par with a WITS, with a UCT. We will be celebrating the accreditation of our last university now, which is Venda. So watch the space, you read about it. We're hoping the president will be there. We know that our previous deputy president, Halema Monklanta, will be there. The minister will be there. We've done. So as this profession, Psyche, we have got a landscape. We've got a presence through all the universities in the country. The profession has put a lot of money in it. The profession has worked tirelessly. So not one, two, public-private partnerships, collaboration with the universities, with the VCs, with everybody. So are we done? No, never. Our one big task, and I'm nearly done. I don't know where Robert is. They are credited at undergraduate level. But we've got a project now, and we're going to look at the postgraduate program. And we are going to change, because what we've also very successfully done is built our own pool of African academics. And where did they come from? Off the Tatuka program. One of the years, they didn't have to serve their training contracts in a firm. Academic. They gave back. They taught. Robert is one of them. We, I don't know where he is. They taught, they worked with our youngsters, they helped them because they understood the issues. So there's a whole infrastructure that was set up to actually make this possible. We are now working together, and CISB is going to help us project-based education. All our HDIs, we're going to work together to say, how are we going to change the education that we give our youngsters to do it differently? To do it differently. And our young pool of academics, I cannot begin to tell you how excited they are. You can do a lot with people when their attitude is right and they know everything. I want to show you in closing, there you go. Since 2005, Tatuka has supported over 300, over 3,000 aspiring CAs, okay? I told you this pipeline will grow slowly. Obviously, funding dependent has to be, so. I'm always begging for money. We've got a thousand, over a thousand qualified CAs. 
that's coming through and where we are is more than 2,000 prospective CAs in our pipeline and the pipeline is growing because our HDIs are all coming on board. They're delivering. I just want to mention one thing to you. At UniZulu, we had our first group of Tatuka students who had to move to UCT to do their CTAs. So UCT said no, they're going to make them write an entrance exam. So I said, excuse me, you're my capacity building university and you want the Tutuka kids to write an entrance exam. So I said, if it means that we go and see the minister or we see the VC, and I think since when I did go and see the VC because we were so unhappy, they moved in without writing. I think you can applaud. They were on the Dean's merit list. Okay, 10 of them. Okay, so that tells you our country can, our people can. We have to spend a little, a lot of money, time, but they get there. How we've managed to shift our demographics, I'm nearly done. Where's my, the last slide? To show you, I can't change, you can read that in the meeting, I can't change the past, but we sure, and all of us can't change the past, but we can change the future. And that's what we must focus on collectively, together. How do we change the future? What do we do? So we measure under 35s in our profession. What does our demographic profile look like? Bearing in mind, it takes seven years to qualify as a CA. In 2002, 2%. Now, African, 24%. 40% at CTA, African.